Here's a neat way to create tactile feedback with a simple rotary switch. Um, this uh, this switch right here is actuated with uh, your thumb or finger, and it rotates about about this axis here. Uh, there's nothing in this hole right now, but typically we would put a um, a shoulder screw through there, uh, and the shoulder screw would be you know bottomed out in, in whatever part was below this, and uh, so this whole switch would just rotate about that shoulder screw. And then on the bottom, um, we've got these, these V grooves machined into a little disc here. And these V grooves would interact with a spring loaded ball plunger that would be installed uh, pointing up and uh, in whatever part is, is down you know, below this surface. So you might have a, a block that is sitting down here. And in that block, you would put a single uh, spring-loaded ball plunger that was pointing up, and that ball would interface with these V grooves. So as you rotated this switch, uh, the uh, the ball plunger um, engages uh, one of the two V grooves and and provides a tactile uh, feedback as to you know what once you've um, once you have uh, achieved your desired positions. We've got them offset at 90 degrees, but you could easily make it offset at uh, whatever angle you wanted to facilitate uh, the application that you're working on. Um, technically, you could put these V-grooves directly into the switch itself and not have this extra part. Uh, this particular um, uh, design that we did was for a very industrial application, and we wanted to make sure that uh, the part wouldn't wear out, um, and and for other reasons, we wanted this part to be <clears throat> uh, UHMW. Uh, so this was made out of UHMW, or maybe it was Delrin. I can't remember now. Um, at, at any rate, it was it was made out of a softer material, and this part here we made out of uh, a stainless steel. So uh, it's not going to wear anytime soon. Um, this this head right here. We accommodated that head by having a slot underneath it, so the head just traveled freely in that slot. But if we do a, an exploded view here, you can see how it's all put together. Uh, we had a, a simple threaded insert that was pressed into the switch component, and then a screw that that held it all together. Now you might you might wonder, you know, if there's only one screw holding it together here, what prevents this from from rotating relative to the switch, the disc that is. And uh, that was controlled because we had our shoulder screw that ran through this, this uh, uh, cylindrical, this bore right here. So the, the two um, uh, concentric mates, so to speak, one with this screw and the other one with that uh, counter bore, are what held the disc in place relative to uh, the switch itself. And uh, I'll, I'll show you what it looked like in, uh, in real life once we actually made this. You can see there by my forefinger, there's a little, um, it's a channel that runs through that, that black part. And we were uh, placing a, um, a rod in that channel. And the switch was just used to uh, retain the rod within that channel. Uh, and so when we disengaged the switch or, or pulled it back, we were able to lift that rod out of the channel. And when we put the rod into the channel and engaged the switch, that rod stayed in there. And that's how we used this mechanism for our application.